one volume, 16 Unreal Engines render four cameras real time, seven Unreal Engines on top of that, just doing AR. That has never been done before. I mean, nobody's doing this <laughs> anywhere. We at Fox Sports, we like to differentiate ourselves by being bold, taking risks. Same game, new attitude was the underlying ethos of Fox Sports and has been for 28 years. That's kind of been the core DNA of the division. We are one of the largest broadcasters of some of the major sports leagues in the United States, from World Series to Super Bowls to World Cup. We try to differentiate ourselves as, you know, being storytellers, but also trying to provide a viewer a different way to see things. We came back from an NAB five or six years ago where there was a demonstration of Unreal Engine married with other technology. And it was the first time that I've seen where a virtual set was actually possible. We came back from that and convinced our boss that we had this tight ecosystem in Charlotte, North Carolina wrapped around NASCAR, that we had a perfect opportunity to experiment with this technology and see if we could do something with it. Always thinking down the road, we would use it on a bigger show with a bigger audience, which would be our primary product, which is Fox NFL Sunday. All through the design process for this stage, it was always gonna be green screen. We we're basically gonna recreate what we had in Charlotte because we knew that workflow. But there had been a lot of noise made around LED and XR. And so we saw a couple early demos, and as soon as we saw it, it was, we need to be there, and if we're not, by the time we install the green screen, it's gonna be obsolete. We had a lot to deal with. We had multiple vendors we were working with that had done components of what we're doing, but not at the scale we're doing and not the level we're trying to do for real time. In a live sports setting, it's very difficult to plan. Whatever happened the play before dictates what happens next. My first Sunday in a control room, I thought it was insane way to work. There are multiple people doing multiple things, talking to multiple people at the same time. And if you walk into a cold, you cannot make sense of it. I guarantee it. One of the big gains of having a virtual stage is being able to change the entire world that you're in. In a live broadcast, you don't have much time to just stop down and reset. We've got maybe two or three minutes when they're running a tape. The biggest switch from green screen to LED is the live component. The director needs to actually see the shot they're about to take. They need to have some form of a preview. And if one camera is rendering a specific angle onto the LED, well, then another camera is not. I've never seen anybody do multiple cameras in a virtual stage. It's always been one camera that tracks and you do the manipulation there. So that's where this ghost frame technology was sort of the secret sauce to making a live broadcast happen. The LEDs that are behind me are running at 240 hertz refresh rate. And what Ghost Frame allows you to do is subdivide those into 60 hertz increments. That allows us, each camera, to be split and take every fourth frame. While the images on the wall can be blurry to the talent, they can still sort of make it out, which is actually really helpful to them. But each individual camera output has its own perspective with corresponding tracking data. To drive this entire wall for one camera, we have four engines times four cameras. Each of those machines is outputting 4K. Most people at this point have 4K TVs. That's your entire screen. That's just one slice of our volume. Being able to stay at 60 frames at that resolution is a challenge in itself. On top of that, there's another seven compositing engines that are taking in our cameras and layering on AR onto that scene. And then there are also two other Unreal engines that we use in the monitors to kind of display a unique tunnel that shows parallax. So 25 Unreal engines on the set. So as you can imagine, it's quite a bit to manage. We use at Rezos to control both the Unreal project when it loads, because again, that same project has to load against 16 different computers at the same time. When you launch a project, it has to push that out and say play in order to get that going. But also we have seven tracked cameras by Stipe using the Stipe Spider system. And they have provided a plugin within Unreal that allows us to map the environments to the LED walls. While we have three squared off walls and a floor, the plugin allows for all of the environments to be seen in such a way that you don't see seams, the colors all match to appear natural. 
with the Unreal platform, it's meant to just do that day in and day out without fail. I think that's a, a true compliment to what, you know, Epic can do. There is definitely that wow factor, walking into a volume and you could switch to another environment within a matter of seconds, just be somewhere else entirely, and it feels real, you're getting the real lighting. I think our talent's so excited. I mean, they see the possibilities, they see the end result, allowing them to kind of interact with XR and AR, that's where we want to go. You know, if you consider the life of this set, this 10 years, there's 10 years of innovation, we're uniquely positioned to grow with the industry. It's pretty clear that Unreal offers us all of the foundation to build upon for, you know, the future for us. Because real time is the future. I don't know what other sports networks think about that, but it's clear to me real time is going to be the de facto way we produce.